What is up? What is up? What is up? Hello, everybody. You're looking at the right side of my head. Um, but hold on just a bit while I get everything ready. Let me, I'm going to switch this on real quick. And we're also going to turn down one piece just a bit. But how are you guys this morning? Thank we already got three people in. Nice. How's it going, everybody? How's it going, everybody? How is it going, everybody? That's because we got three viewers. Um, yeah, everybody has been jumping on One Piece since uh, COVID started, and we just got episode 1015, and now it seems like uh, it's time to do some damage. Uh, I'm kind of... If you're watching, you like anime, you like One Piece, share with your friends, uh, let them know uh, what we're doing today, what I'm doing today, let them watch. Uh, but other than that, jump in and let's talk some anime. I, I Yesterday was Wednesday. We had the anime podcast. I, I didn't get tuckered out. I didn't get tired out of talking. I never get tired of talking anime. So let's continue today. And One Piece has been killing me. 10, 15, 1015. We got so many re revelations, so many validations, and there's just so much going on. Uh, we are here, uh, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4, and I beat the game. Everything's S's, but we are trying to get everybody leveled all the way up. That's all I want to do. I like my characters. I like the straw hats. So it's time to get in. So let's journey on the grand line. Oh shit, was I already done? No, I was not. Let's go. Let's see, how far are we? I remember fighting them. I remember that. I remember that. I think we are right here. We'll start right here in old friend. Um, I don't know who I'm going to pick. Let's see. Uh, and for those that are following, if you're new to the channel, this is Edge Gaming slash on Twitch. It's still named Elijah underscore, underscore 5000. That's just because that's my name and everything is hosted there. Podcasts, streaming, videos, all that shit is there. And on YouTube, you can follow us on YouTube by going to any one of the pages. Click on the link there. It'll take you straight to the YouTube page where you can subscribe and help us build back our numbers after our first YouTube channel got destroyed for copyright bullshit. Um, if you're on Facebook, after the stream is done, they might remove it for copyright issues with the music, which is, again, more bullshit because all the music that we're playing is 100% copyright free. Most of it we paid for, so we can use, we've got everything for it, but Facebook doesn't even give you the option to send that information in um, really through further research on their end or something pinging or whatever they end up taking uh, their mute restriction off at various times, but they're only keeping the videos for 90 days now, so it's better for us. Just go straight over to YouTube or Twitch, and you can see the videos there. Um, let's see. I was working with Brooke the other day, because Brooke, Frankie, and Robin are the only pirates that are left on the Straw Hats that aren't murked out, but we are doing Devil Fruit users. Oh, shit, now that I think about it, I don't know. We're, we're going to level them up anyway. I don't know if we're going to survive because the grand line is rough. And most of these people I haven't played with, but fuck it. This is the same thing that happens in the show. Luffy might get his ass whipped, but he comes back stronger than ever. Um, so Devil Fruit users, drop in chat who you want me to play with. Uh, go ahead and shout out some characters if you know any. If somebody looks interesting, let me know. But let's uh, let's get into it. And these, like, uh, Pirate One group, which is Whitebeard, Marco, Ace, Kaido, Big Mom, and Shanks are all marked out. Katakuri's not. Blackbeard uh, Teach is not. And some of the rest of them. So instead of staying with the Straw Hats, because whatever money we get, we can allocate to whatever character we want. Oda doesn't have a Devil Fruit. Uh, Drake seems too weak. Hmm. 
let's do I'm always geared towards pirates anyway you know what Jessica likes to roll with buggy so let's take buggy the clown uh, for a spin and try to level him up a little bit and see if we get past this level mm. hell yeah I got three million berry so let's go ahead and level up some of this shit uh, we'll get another slot there. I think we've actually unlocked all of Buggy's specials. So now it's just like increasing his strength, increasing his health, increasing his defense. So this is done. So now let's get over here then, Buggy. Defense again. Everything's costing a little bit more. So you'll see that money start to pitter and skitter away. Oh, Buggy's kind of cheap, bro. But I feel like Buggy's got an assortment of fucking moves that don't make him a cheap hoe. Buggy is like. Buggy is the smartest character in the series because Buggy went from scraps to like seven warlords of the sea. For no good fucking reason. Well, I'm not going to say that. I want to say the reason that Buggy can like sit on that that seat is because he was on Goldie Rogers, you know, team. So Buggy, Buggy the Clown. Oh, yeah, we almost done. OK, now we need more money and we only have. And it, I like this, that the deal is like spread out like the islands and shit but buggy's almost done uh strain defense 18 health yeah buggy about to wreck house i think we got his strongest move sets on here already <clears throat> oh what is that one uh cat burglar all right let's dive into it first mission uh, Buggy the Clown has powered up. Let's go ahead and kill these. And remember, we are just in the Grand Line. We are nowhere else but the Grand Line. There's still one more uh, treasure uh, log that we're not tapped into. But I have beat in 100% of the whole game. We platinum this bitch. So that's nice. There's no fucking reason to do anything else. You know, I thought Buggy was like shooting bombs up there to come down. I did not know he had his ass just up in the air fucking him up. There it is, the Buggy bomb. Nice. See, I never get a chance to play with Buggy because uh, Jessica always played with him. And then I'm more like anybody that has ever played games with me, I'm more the person that plays with everybody because I want to level up every character i like all the characters they all have unique stories sometimes you have some shit characters like nah fuck them like kill a kills video game you guys have seen me play there's characters i'll never play with on that game they don't mean anything to the story well i mean they mean stuff to the story but as far as the game they don't mean shit to the game it doesn't help retell the other side of the story so i, I don't use them there's a exclude unless i'm like training that's the only way that i'll use those characters so Buggy, like I like his move sets. I don't ever really get to see Buggy's skill sets. Buggy's one of the one of the ones that faked his way all the way up to like a supreme seat, and then once he was like living cushy, that's when they got rid of that shit. And you're like, you know what, Buggy will be all right. Buggy like came up with Luffy. Everybody thought he was uh, with old pops. Oh shit, I didn't know you was back here, you little bitch. And uh, escaped Impel down. That raised his bounty. Uh, survived the war, uh, talked to Shanks, and then everybody saw how, like, if they didn't know Buggy and Shanks were on Goldie Rogers crew, they saw that they had a, a, a friendship. Plus, the other fucking inmates were dumb anyway. They thought, you know, Buggy was King Buggy and shit. And then the world government followed suit. I know that they're not as dumb as Buggy, but Buggy used to kill motherfuckers back in the day. When he was a kid, he had no problem shooting people, killing people in his own crew when we first started in the anime and shit. So he, he's a cutthroat pirate, even though he is kind of, uh, he's kind of like Jack Sparrow. He wants to preserve his own life. Let's go. We have got to go. The buggy mobile. 
up here and beat some more ass. The one thing that'll kill the score is time, so let's not waste no damn time. Oh. If you are watching One Piece, where are you at in this series? It's going to be hard to, to not spoil shit. So if you don't want to be spoiled with One Piece shit, uh, go ahead and tune out now. I'll do my best not to spoil because I'm caught all the way up. Uh, but how far have you guys gotten? Was the quarantine the first time you guys watched One Piece? If not, when did you first watch it? Did you keep up with it? Because a lot of people tap out after, you know, a couple hundred episodes, you know. Kira Toriyama and Oda longest running narrative series that are most compelling because Dragon Ball is still super popular. One Piece is super popular. And motherfuckers did the Lord's work. Let me know if the uh, One Piece background music is distracting. If so, we can go ahead and cut that. Uh, or we can cut the music. I don't, I don't mind. Today, it's just a morning to fucking chill. I got to figure out what we're going to eat for dinner tonight. I already took the dogs on a walk. I got my second workout of the day to do. And I'll probably do another bonus stream. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Sorry, Mr. Three. You're fucking with Bug. Actually, they, they formed a team. I'm spoiling shit, my bad. I'm trying not to spoil shit. Like even the impel down shit, there's there's a lot of story that goes with it. So me saying, you know, some things ain't really gonna spoil you. There's a lot more that happens that leads to Buggy going to the war and all that shit. But Buggy had the uh, the biggest come up in my opinion in the series. Fuck, big ma, you bitch. Big mom. It's fucking weird. She was a chubby little girl, which is normal, but I thought she was going to stay just big all the time because of uh, her giant roots or whatever. But then they show pictures of Big Mom like in her youth, and it's like, oh, this is how Big Mom was fucking everybody. She got like 60 kids making like expanding her territory and shit. This bitch was like uh, Alvita after she got her slick, slick fruit. Or whatever, slip slip food or whatever the fuck Alvita had. So this bitch was fucking killing the game. She was, she, Al, Alvita thought that she created the game, but Big Mom created the first OnlyFans in One Piece. We're just going to say that. Like, everybody was after her ass. The, the fishmen, Navy, other pirates, devil fruit users. Like, you name it, she got it. And I want to say, I feel like Yamato is her daughter. But Kaido wanted to keep her. I don't know. That's how I feel. That's how I felt since we've met Yamato. But Yamato also is the cleanest character. She looks like a fucking ogre, bro. And we don't really know all of her powers, all of her transformations, being Kaido's daughter. I I'm just trying to figure out who. And I'm trying to find out who is Big Mom and Kaido's kids. Because they were on the rocks pilot. You know they fucked. You know they did. You know Big Mom did. That whole pirate crew was about strength, about power. They would kill the weak of their own fucking crew. Big Ma fucked people to death, kept the kids, became, you know, an emperor of the sea. She she did she did too much in her time. Hmm. Hold up, Buggy. Katakuri got them boots though. He got them prince boots. Up here beating people's ass, singing purple rain. Purple rain, purple rain. Was it category? Purple rain. Uh oh, that's the end of the game. Fuck. Thought I thought there's still some more people to kill before we finish. All right, time's good, but I don't know how many people Buggy killed though. This motherfucker is leaning. His head rests his knees. There we go. S's. Give me the money. What we got, what we got, what we got. Ah, fuck. Okay, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. 
Nice. Buggy's almost done. Let's see if we can finish him out. Kobe beef. Buggy, 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 buggy. I have my earpiece in because I'm listening to the playback, but I always forget that there's a lag there. So what I'm hearing and what you guys are hearing is just off. So fuck it. All right. So that's our first Devil Fruit user, Buggy. Almost murked out. Stamina is low, but fuck it. He's strong as hell. Uh, who is the next one we're going to hit? Let's get off of this tier. Oh, that boy is kind of weak. Let's do Drake. We're going to use some of this money to beef up Drake because I know he'll get his ass. So we just put a poll up uh, if you're watching on Twitch. Uh, do you guys think I'm going to die more than five times? Uh, so far, we haven't. But I am dipping into characters that haven't been touched. And I don't want to go back down levels. I want to keep keep these motherfuckers coming up and getting strong and getting that money. So uh, death is a possibility. I died yesterday. It was not pretty. Oh, shit. I ran through that money kind of quick. The uh, poll's up for 10 minutes. What do you think? Do you think I'm going to die more than five times? Go ahead and hit that poll. If you're on twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5,000, we are uh, getting strong. Oh, shit. I'm out of money. Okay. Okay. Since we're out with Drake, let's go back to Buggy. Oh, I got five and I might only need. Oh, okay. 42,000. And as you guys see at the very end, I really didn't mention it. Like every time you get money, that is an allotment that you can use a berries to go ahead and upgrade. But you also need different coins. So you can see like 773 snails is going to use nine. 797 silver buggy pins is going to use two. And then 633 Mr. Uh, three, it's going to use one. So we also have to collect those. So it makes it hard because you have to pick specific battles that your character is going to be in to get that certain pin. So uh, Kaido, I still haven't finished him, even though everything is maxed out because I can't find this pin, even though I beat everything. It, it's I don't know where the fuck this pin is that Kaido needs. It's uh, actually. Um, oh, boy, that is his mammoth his, his one of his uh, generals, one of his uh, retainers. Let's do pursuit. That went to Zao that fucking trying to fuck up that goddamn elephant. I was so mad. Like, I was so happy that they had, uh, you know, different animals, uh, different animal, the, the voice of all voices and shit like that. But I was, I was pissed that they, you know, they are fucking attacking the home of the minks. I was like, you motherfuckers, dude. Like, I don't know. It just, it, it, it hit it hard. Maybe, it, maybe it's just like, you know, I have, I have a friend named uh, Jesse Allen Horn. He is a singer here in Oklahoma, but he's also Indian. And, and one day we were driving. I had just got my Toyota Corolla out of the shop, which was my first car. It was my mom's car. Uh, I, I like to say powder blue, maybe computer blue. And something happened to where there was like a wreck or whatever. And on my passenger side, and the headlight shit was all fucked up. All right, let's transform. Drake can transform, boom, into a dragon, bitch. Uh, and I like his story so far, too, but they, they're skipping out. I need to see more of Drake. Um, so we went to the movies, me, Patrick, and Alan. And 
we're driving and we're thinking about getting something to eat. I'm going to drop the guys off at the house and chill out. And all of a sudden, like this fucking doe, like this young, just little doe jumps. And we're, we're over by the mall. So we're in the city. There's no like forest or shit anywhere. I guess it had ran all the way into uh, Edmond, OKC. Get the fuck out of here, Rob Lucy. And uh, it jumped over my side and hit the passenger side light that I had just had fixed. And I was like, my motherfucking car. I was like, I was like, God damn it. I just got this car fixed. Alan's sitting there laughing his ass off. Big fat pats in the back. He can't fucking stop laughing. And so I was like, what the fuck? I just got this out of the shop. I'm going to have to take it back in the shop. This is fucked up. I got practice, blah, blah, blah. And then Alan just like, man, I... I think we need to go back. And I was like, why do we need to go back? He's like, because he's like, I, I don't know if it's like just the Indian in me, but we got to check and see if it's dead. I was like, motherfucker. It's like, we were in the right lane and it jumped through traffic to hit us in that far right lane. It's dead now. There's car. There was a lot of cars behind us. We were turning. So I don't think we killed it, but the cars behind us, as soon as that light turned green, the motherfuckers hauled ass. So I, I feel like he's dead. She's dead. And I'm not going back for that shit. This bitch is trying to assassinate me. I don't trust deers at all. They look cute. The only the only deer that I trust is Chopper, and that's because he's a fucking reindeer. Uh, the deer deers. They uh, one night Jessica was driving from here back to her hometown because she's from a different hometown than me. Especially when we when we first started dating, uh, and these motherfuckers like she was driving and a deer jumped to try to get her. I said these son of a bitches. They fucking tried to get me, couldn't get me, and now they're coming after my fucking baby. So we got her, we actually got her like deer whistles for a car. I was like, fuck this. You don't need no fucking big ass, grown ass deer jumping through your little ass Saturn. So we get these whistles supposed to detract them. And she hasn't, you know, she didn't get hit again, but I did get a fucking note with some deer feed uh, in front of my mom's house. And I was like, fuck it. We got to move. I got to move somewhere. I don't want them chasing after my family. I don't want them to be coming after my girl. These some bitches coming after my baby. We, uh... We ain't having none of that shit. Now try to try to stay with me. I've been up all night. I usually work the night shift, and so I'm changing my sleep schedule back. I got off because you know when you're at home and we're your family, you're watching shit like Loki or Sweet Tooth or whatever. You're getting on the schedule that your other, your significant other is getting on because you want to spend time, right? Like you should never be in a relationship where you don't fucking want to spend some modicum of time with the person that you're with and so it's time for me to get back on my sleep schedule so i am a little tired but i'm gonna go to sleep a little bit later in the day that way once i get ready for work tomorrow i'll sleep through the day wake up and go to work at, uh, get up at eight and go to work it, it's it's all a part of a plan you sons of bitches oh garp Garp is fucking dope. I feel like Garp. I feel like Garp and Dragon wanted to be pirates and wanted to, wanted to be something at some point in time because for Garp to really hate the fucking Celestials, to do his own shit, to partner with Roger and keep his son a secret, uh, he's got he's got like a really good fucking heart. He's got morals. And I want to know the secrets that he knows because between him and Sengoku, there's some old school shit that's nobody's going to fucking know except for the ones who were alive during that time, which would be Rayleigh, uh, Goldie, Roger, the crew, all that shit. But I just get so excited any time that fucking uh, Garp comes in because... He has, like, now we know he has hockey, but before that, it's just like, oh, Luffy's grandpa's just fucking strong. He can hit Luffy. Nothing can hurt Luffy. He's made of fucking rubber. What the fuck is going on? And then he's he's testing Luffy, and holy shit, he doesn't care that Luffy's his grandkid. He's not going to, you know, give him the grandpa pass that we normally see in anime. He's going to fucking really chase him. Hell, yeah. like, you either have grandparents to fucking train the shit out of you to where you almost die and they're like oh that's normal you have to live up to the family name or you have grandparents that oppose what you're fucking doing and so you're left there uh you know 
in opposition to some way, whether they're your rivals, whether they just don't support you. And then you just have the grandparents that don't know. And to have Garp be not only Luffy's grandpa, to know that, you know, who Luffy's dad is, to know what he's done in the military, to know what he's done in the past, why he's a fucking legend. It, it, the, it's like a fucking triple decker. You keep getting more every time, you know, you look at this scene and she's like, is that another fucking layer? And it, uh, that's what's the beauty of it. Like, not only the pirates, but the Navy officers, the admirals, have compelling stories as well. Sorry, I'm geeking out. Like, One Piece kind of hit a chord with me uh, when I first picked it up in Shonen Jump. I've been reading it ever since. And then, lately, it's just been striking another chord, especially with Dragon Ball Super. And Akira, and, uh, Toriyama, and uh, Toyotaru going back and making, really bringing a lot of continuity into canon and bringing a lot of shit that you didn't really hear of except for in Dragon Ball. It's it's real fucking nice. And right now I'm just like geeking so hard, going back and watching full series. Did anybody watch Sailor Moon Eternal, the movie? Fucking beautiful. I don't care what y'all say. Goku and, and Serena and going at it and Usagi, it's, it's, it's a tough one. This bitch has got all the power in the world. She will give you a therapy kiss. But I like Usagi. Usagi has her own problems. She has her own issues. And there's times where you see, you know, the future Princess Serendi. And there's time where you see the current Usagi, whether she's 14, 15, whatever the fuck it is. And it's like, damn, dude, these motherfuckers are going out to war, killing fucking beings at this at this age. This is why these motherfuckers are bad as fuck. God damn. Okay, capture plateau and bottom. That's what I'm trying to do. Where's the fucking... There's the leader. Fuck. Shit, I missed the leader. The leader's all the way across the fucking screen. I don't know who he's heading towards either. I'm sitting here talking my ass off, not even paying attention. Drake, what are you fucking doing? You've messed up so many things so far. Oh, you slow bitch. Carrot, my girl Carrot. Carrot, Carrot's the homie. Carrot, Carrot held me down in One Piece when I didn't think I was gonna get a Yoko Kurama moment ever again. Like not only stylized that she looked good as fuck, but the Minx ain't no fucking joke. I, a lot of people don't want Carrot to be a part of the the Straw Hat Pirates. I don't know, cause Luffy ideally wanted ten members, ten members to make a super crew even though he said he'd have a bigger crew than shanks shanks had a huge ass crew i don't know if Kara's on that team because right now in wano i don't know what's going on with her i miss her though oh shit oh i like that you hit me with that uh that uh electro shock there's there's nothing better. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting on a tangent. My knee's been bothering me. I got a lot of... I think I busted a bursar sack. But I love re rehabilitation, physical rehabilitation, because I love exercise. I'm a kines major. I'm also a martial artist, fighter, all this other shit. But when you go, you get to just focus. So I feel like so much more than what I do when I'm lifting. Lifting, it's more about the circuit altogether. whatever I'm doing, whether it's a time challenge, whether it's endurance, whether it's stability, mobility, but when you're going to rehab, it's more about rebuilding. And for me, that's a huge difference in the way that I perform. When I train, I train to be efficient no matter what. So there's angles that you aren't supposed to do things at, you do them at because you never know all my training and shit is for the real life like yes, motherfuckers know if, if we're getting into a fight if we are unless something oh, get his ass Drake unless something happens to where I, I'm just surprised I get to make that choice and if we're if the choice has to be made where we're fighting you're dying that, that's all it is because I don't I don't have time I don't have the patience to put my life in jeopardy and be like, ah, maybe I could do this. And like, nah, we just need to get this shit over as soon as possible. So when you're training like that, you are inconsiderate 
excuse me, of your body. There's injuries I wish I would have paid attention to. Because, like, my knee, I can't do certain drills anymore after working at UPS because I, a piece of my patella got chipped and then it rehealed. And now, where I would normally put my knee on the ground is just that deal, and it fucking hurts. It's protruding out. It's something that's not going to change. Taking kicks to the knees for, for students to get comfortable with actually kicking to the target, feeling how it gives. You know, and I'm not just going to straight leg and let them hyperextend my knee, but kicks to the top of the knee and everything else, it doesn't help anything else in, in that joint. So I was like, fuck, dude. There's a lot of shit that I could have avoided. But I, I was dedicated, you know, for 30 and some years. I didn't change my training regimen is every single day lifting, fighting, you know, extreme calisthenics. And now I've changed it kind of like Triple H to be able to move now that I'm 34. I want to be able to move, go running with my dogs, take them out and shit and not get up like an old fucking man and be making noises and shit. You know what I mean? So, fuck, Drake. I had one more move, bitch. Mm. You know what? I'm not going to. I ain't about to badmouth Drake. Drake is good. Drake, I like Drake's moveset. I wish he would do more in the series because this motherfucker's badass. And when we first saw him, uh, he, they, they got, they, they got one punch. Not gonna lie. Like when you see this man, don't immediately think he's gonna be doing shit like this. He will turn into a dinosaur, but he will get his ass whooped at certain points. And it's 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 wanted. It's part of the. It's you know part of the thing. You know. And I do like his hat, too. His hat and his little uh, eye patch. It's cute. Uh, we need to go to the far side. I always worry about the time, but I also worry about how many fucking characters are here. I want to kill every fucking body. I want, I want everybody's ass. If I was a pirate captain... Nah, nah. If I was a pirate captain, it's, it's just make it to the ship. Let's go. We'll fuck up whoever gets in the way after that. Eh, it's okay. After that, it's okay. Man, I was watching. I've been, I've been watching Doom Patrol. Ah, fucking amazing. I'm glad that Brendan Fraser's in it. He's actually getting ready to come out in a movie with Don Cheadle and Benicio Del Toro and a, and a huge fucking cast that's looking amazing. Like a heist gone wrong, like a secret heist to catch the heisters and shit. But Doom Doom Patrol is amazing. Did you know that they had the live action City Hunter anime with Jackie Chan on Amazon Prime? I think... Once I get this shit figured out, for some reason, it won't let me do my prime here on Twitch. Because I've been wanting to watch more anime with you. But after we did the first two episode series, it stopped letting me do it. So I need to, if anybody out in chat knows how to do the prime video, we can watch that. We can watch the City Hunter movie. We can watch a whole bunch of shit together uh, in our community hangs Wednesday evenings or Thursdays, depending on if I have some extra time to stream. But yeah, let me know. But I was like, holy shit, is this? Yes. Yes, it is. This is the one with Jackie fucking Chan in it. His buddy dies. He takes care of his uh, daughter. And then she becomes a beauty. And it's, it's a comedy out the ass. But it looks so fucking like when I say it looks good, it looks horrible. And when I say it looks horrible, I mean, it looks great. Like it's like the last three Tremors movies like you know that it's a part of a franchise it's amazing you know you know Jackie Chan's awesome the fighting all the shit they have a great cast it's comedy you know he's good at comedy but it's also an old fucking franchise it's an old fucking film that we didn't think we were gonna get and we glad we have it so don't go in this expecting high quality Jackie Chan as, as except for the martial arts that's always gonna be on point and even like the gun work, God, just the shit that he does is real. Uh, Saiba, City City Hunter, like trying to sleep through this drunken induced fantasy. And the clocks, he has a second alarm clock to wake him up. It goes off. He just pulls his gun and shoots it. 
I don't know. I'm a sucker for old shit like that. Like when Jackie Chan did that and Battle Creek Brawl, if you ever see, if you can find Battle Creek Brawl, that is like one of his earliest, may, I think maybe his first American film. And it's all about his uncle kind of training him to move faster, be more agile, kind of improving his martial arts. And then he enters a uh, roller skate derby because uh, ba -da -ba -da, Chinatown, I, I, the butt to butt is just like, guess what? Uh, Chinatown is being protected by the Italian mob. So what do we do now? We give them whatever they want, but Jackie, that's not right. I got to stand up for my uncle and blah, 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 blah. He fights like a strong man in the leotard. He's fighting like other mobster gangsters and rocker chicks, I think. And he has to roller derby fight them to win this tournament, to win the money and shit. And it's, it's, I remember watching this with my cousin Trey and Anna Darko. I think, uh, maybe we found it to rent after that, but that was one of our favorite titles at the time to to overdub if you want to do fun shit watching uh old martial arts films turn down the volume and dub over that shit dude they're like all of them are fucking the master of the flying guillotine like uh, this one battle creek brawl that i'm talking about even city hunter all that shit will be fun to fucking dub over it's hilarious uh yeah uh, but they're all good too. Don't don't give it twisted. Don't be like just trying to dub. Oh, it's good, but to and dub over it. Like dub over it, but then kind of pay attention because the, the martial arts skill is there. The story goes back and forth. Master of the Flying Guillotine is is decent. No shit. It it's one of those where you're like, how is this old guy moving his eyebrows, feeling the air to throw this guillotine to fucking behead these motherfuckers that basically betrayed him. And then you got a dude with no shoes and his feet are fucking rough and hairy and shit. And he gets cooked alive. It's, it's a great movie. You got to watch it. And then I think there's like a one-armed man. That's what it was. That's why that movie was so fucking funny to me. Because I was like, he did it. It was a one-armed man. Just like fucking uh, Leslie Nielsen and shit. Uh, it wasn't Naked Gun. Which one was it? It was the one where he goes to jail and he befriends. Uh, God damn it. Now I'm not remember the actor's name. I'll find it here in a minute after this uh, level because now it's going to bother me. As you can tell, I watched a whole bunch of just comedy shit, especially when Comedy Central had comedies, but uh, USA had comedies on at the time. There's a lot of shit that had like little comedies that you could watch. Either super late, like Once Bitten with Jim Carrey when he was younger, the vampire comedy, um, fucking uh, Teen Wolf, there's a whole bunch of shit. Ferris Bueller. God, what are some other shit? Blackula. What are some old, uh, like, live action films you guys used to watch? If you're around my age, because I don't know when they stopped doing that shit. But anime-wise, what are you guys watching right now? I've been talking about the shit I've been watching from the... Thank you. Got this, bitch. The live action City Hunter to everything else. Um... Uh, I didn't get no S on this time. Woo! Damn. Okay. Nice. Damn, shit. We could have got some more money. Um, what was I? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was like, was I looking up Jackie Chan shit or was I looking up Leslie Nielsen? Leslie Nielsen. So the one, Spy Hard. That is the one. Yes, fucking Fred Ward. That is, I always fucking fuck up his name, but Leslie Nielsen, Anna Nicole Smith was in it, OJ Simpson, we know that. Uh, George Kennedy, Fred Ward, and then Kathleen Freeman. Fucking amazing. Uh, Kathleen Freeman is just a joy in all the films because she's cussing somebody out, telling them some shit, doing whatever. Um, okay, let's go back into this. Do we need to level up Drake again? I think Drake did well enough, but I want to try another Devil Fruit user. Uh, we are going to up his stats. 
Um, Killer's not a devil fruit user. Ooh. Now, I'm not going to lie. Rob Lucy's aesthetics were clean as fuck when I first saw him being like a leopard. I love big cats. I love dogs. And I love big cats. Um, but he's he's kind of strong. Or let's go ahead and do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and get Rob Lucy's stats. Um, I'm about to hit that hyperbolic time chamber and start training like Goku. Now the one thing. Somebody's asking me which training montage I liked in Dragon Ball. And you, I try to differentiate the series, you know, because Westerners call them Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, GT, Super. But uh, collectively, it is just one story being told about Goku. And so the training montages that I love, there's probably about... I want to say I know that there's three off the top of my head that I fucking love. So... The first one is Goku and Trillin, Krillin training with Master Roshi back in the day when they first met and they became his disciples. That training montage was, ooh. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, wasn't I supposed to do something? Yeah, I was supposed to uh, level up Drake. Um, but that training montage was amazing because it incorporated sh like one I, I do martial arts and I do different kind of stuff I've had stuff like that happen with coaches before but it was in the spirit and the essence of martial arts Akira being a huge martial arts fan and it was really cool to be like oh he's he's just he's taking them old school they out running they're delivering the milk it immerses them in the community there's a lot of stuff so like I said Hattori airlifts uh, in a healing item Killing Machine, Full Force Burst, Six King Pistol, Unleashes a Sock, okay, and Ultimate Radius, okay. I need to see what moves we got. Heroes for Seek. No, we need... Cat Burglar. Yeah, fuck this. It's, like, it's better to go with the basics because you're going to use those more than anything. Critical Tag. doctor's tactic okay let's get started but where was i oh yeah that training montage was just cool because they were sitting there just doing basic shit and we've we've done weighted training before and uh it's, you just understand everything that's being done from a technical standpoint and it still captivates you as a manga but at the time the dragon ball was at the very beginning it was very heavily martial arts based there wasn't any uh, magic, there was no Kai, there was no key, there was no transformations really, uh, except for Master Roshi and a few. So that's my first out of my three favorite training montages in um, Dragon Ball. The other one, let's see, I would say the next training montage would be uh, I know for sure the spaceship when Goku's going to Namek because he had to train, you know. 100 times Earth gravity, and then he got stuck on the hole and had to use the command man space, which should have melted his gloves and made him, you know, he should have died. But then there was also like the uh, gravity machine fucked up and he was stuck on the ground, kind of like they redid it again with, um, with Yamcha in Z. But when he was trying to be nosy and see what Vegeta was doing, well, he'd have no fucking business looking at what Vegeta was doing. He'd have no business at Bulma's house. They done. But that's my number two. And then my third training montage that I really enjoy, like throughout the entire series, I'm going to say this last one with Goku and Vegeta when they grew beards and they were in you know the same dimensional space as the hyperbolic time chamber because the way that they were fighting, the way that they were moving uh, with the gloves and everything else was just, it's just something you don't get to see. And I feel like Vegeta, once Goku came back to life, kind of treated Goku like, you know, his little brother, you know, cause he's still the, the prince of all Saiyans. And he's like, yeah, my little brother's back. You know, he, he, he over here challenging me, you know, he weighs less than me so he can jump a little bit higher, but he's still my little brother. Cause I got some shit I can teach him, but I like that 
because it was something new that I didn't think I was going to see, and it was something that I wanted to see for a while, like Vegeta and Goku sitting there training voluntarily uh, instead of going their separate way. They're still doing their own separate thing, but, you know, they're doing it together. If that makes any sense. So I'd have to say those are my top three. Those aren't all of my favorites, but those would be my top three. And they're all at three different stages of Goku's life. When he's a kid, when he's first starting, then his, um, I mean, he had trained with Kami and Popo, which was nice. He trained with King Kai, but after all that training, he still continued to push himself even more going to Namek. We know why. Wait a second. Are they in trouble? Fuck, dude. Why is everybody back here? Um, and then the very last one is now in Super. We're still continuing with training. And we're getting to see on-air training where we don't get to see it as much in the manga. Because it takes up too much too much space. And that's one thing that I'm learning right in my manga. It's like, I can't have as much dialogue as I want. With a comic, a Western comic, I can a little bit. But I am taken from some of the, the great mangaka that, that I've listened to in their interviews is some of the stuff that is written is only being expressed for the panel if that makes sense like i have this vision of what the scene should be and i'm building up to that moment and so being able to do that allows me to think less fully but also emote more fully with the actions of those characters and this this is why these training montages help with that shit Mm. Whip that shit out. Oh, Lucy. Like, I'm going to be trash on time, but we whooping that ass. Oh. Huh. Ivan Kof. One of my favorite characters on here because I, I'm i not going to lie. Any, any, um, any other sexual orientations in anime, I always enjoy because you get an expression of that character a little bit more so uh, risque than the main characters. Like, this character may not come back, they may, so I'm going to do everything I want with this character. And I feel like that's what made Ivan Kov and a lot of other characters, Bon Clay, so much better because it's not like they have to be straight, they have to be anything. They can just be. And it's never anything you bring into question, it's never anything that doesn't feel like it's out of place, it's just fucking cool. I feel like just being black, seeing more uh, inclusive uh, people and characters into these stories, it makes you feel like you're getting your moment. Because there's a lot more other races, there's a lot uh, different sexual orientations in anime than there are black characters. But when you do see that, you're like, it it's probably coming and now with these black companies these african companies the the black mangaka in japan they are creating anime that represents the culture and that's fucking amazing because as people have noticed we will spend you know that black dollar on things that represent us because it's, it's you don't get to see that much the world has told us that we don't get a representation because of color of our skin and then try to sit there and spin you some bullshit and say you don't see color. You see color all the time. Uh, it's just weird. Like, me and my wife had this talk. And I, I've heard this before. And I guess the easiest way to explain, like, she kind of got it to me. Like, I'm taller. So when I look, I look over people's head and I don't think anything of it. But I'm never not aware that someone's shorter than me. You know what I mean? So if I'm black, fucking everywhere, you're never not aware that I'm black. Anytime that you see me, you see fucking color. You just want to make it a choice of whether you see it or whether you can ignore something. And like everything just proves you can't. All these fucking TikTok memes and all and, and vines and like vines, memes, everything that's come out since I don't know when, especially around the anime community. You know, well, we're, we're deep into it and we're elevating and innovating. But the only thing we want to do is be a part of the culture and be a part of shit that we enjoy like everybody else. So it's not like, I don't know, y'all motherfuckers think we're going to take everything. Like, no, nah, we'll, we'll share anime with you and we'll battle you and we'll fucking talk shit about your favorite character. And we'll fucking have, you know, no, nah, this is a better character because 
that's what anybody would do when they find a friend that's got a commonality. If you guys like anime, I like anime. We cool. I don't have no problem with you until you start acting like you're fucking crazy. And then I had to check your ass. But other than that, I don't give a shit. You could watch every, you could watch Slice of Life shit and I'd never seen it before. We still got a bond, you know, with anime. I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to gatekeep. I'm not gonna tell you what to watch, what not to watch, how to cosplay, what the character's ethnicity is. That the motherfuckers that create the show tell you that shit. That ain't my place. Like I just want to talk to more people that enjoy the shit that I do because this shit is amazing. Damn, bro, we. Oh, this bitch gonna hit me in the back of the head while I'm sitting there stretching. You thought you thought I didn't mm. get them loose. Get them. Get it. Get that. Okay. You know what? We need to get these. I need to get these move sets down. Mm. Mm. I know when we first met this motherfucker here, I was like, is he Super Saiyan? Motherfuckers, he like, does he have a, 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 a uh, group of people that transform into fucking like where? Because I didn't know if it was a devil fruit or they just transformed. And I was like, oh, they all got animal devil fruits. Hell yeah. And then it's like, oh, they just got some cold ass devil fruits. You got the dimensional door devil fruit. You got the fucking leopard. You got the giraffe. You got the fucking soap bubble. You got uh, elephant as a sword and shit. That's, I was like, these motherfuckers are stacked out. At this point in time in One Piece, it doesn't fucking matter, you know, what the devil fruit is. You just get, I mean, there's, I like the books and shit that, that tell about the devil fruits, but we just need more devil fruit users, basically what it is. Once we find out they skill, they special, shit, we're going to have them. Oh, come on, come on, come on. This nigga, he's flying. If he's flying, you're dying. That's all I'm saying. Oh, let me. This motherfucker said, let me. Mm. Oh, my bad. Still had Asta. We, we in the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Into the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't, we ain't gonna do that. Um. Who do it? Oh, you motherfucker. Hmm. Oh. That like the Rob Lucy right now, that's like when your mom or grandma just get mad, everybody gets I remember my grandma got so mad one day. She just called everybody into the living room to get a whooping. Like, no shit. Like people People, when I say people, I mean me, was in my room doing my homework, and she just called us, like, she got Taylor first, and then it was just, like, from the top on down. So she got me, I got a couple couple of raps, and I was like, yeah, the fuck? Why, why am I getting whooped, Grandma? What did I do? And then she caught the other two, Trendy and Trey, and then my grandpa was coming in there, and she's like, you better get your ass out of here before I whoop your ass, too. And I was like, I don't know who pissed Grandma off. But uh, you motherfuckers better leave me the fuck alone. Just sit down. And that's how Lucy's whooping that ass right now. Like he, that I saw my grandma do that shit right there. You're not going anywhere. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Mm. I'm watching Impel Down. This is this was my um, what is your favorite arc in One Piece? Let me ask that shit. Um, the submissions closed. Man, y'all motherfuckers didn't vote. <laughs> but um, we might put that up here in a second. Yeah, I'll put that up. What is your favorite arc in One Piece? Because, and when I say favorite, how what made you? Okay, which arc made you feel the most emotionally, or you think is a staple? of One Piece, like holds the series down. Cause I've heard somebody say Impel Down is the, the peak in the climax of One Piece so far. I don't know if I can co-sign on that completely, 
But I will say when I got challenged, uh, because watching all, you know, reading the manga completely, watching all the episodes, you know, all the shit, I got tasked with picking the arc that represents One Piece the best. Oh, this motherfucker about to... So that way uh, people could watch it and see if it hooked them to One Piece or not. Now, is everybody dead? Nope. I had went to Water 7 because Water 7 has the... Um, I said Impel Down. Uh, was it Impel Down or was it the Robin arc right before Impel Down? Well, anyway, Water 7 has the arc where the saved Nico Robin arc. What the fuck is going on? Let's get my health back, bro. Get my ass whooped. And, uh, like, because you go from meeting Frankie, you find out, you know, why Frankie is who he is, why he acts the way he does, blah, blah, blah. Then you find out about Nico Robin and her basically, like, doing her shit. You find out about the Straw Hatch Resolves. Then it goes impel down because we had, like, a... I mean, it doesn't immediately go there, but we had some stuff happen. I would say the next one would be the Summit War arc and Impel Down and all that shit. So those were the main ones that elicited emotions and actually told the story. And when I say told the story, it's like, where should I start? Okay, well, if I'm giving you an arc and it's not like the the generic start from the beginning, then if we're looking at Water 7 and the Nico Robin arc, like you really find out what kind of pirates they are. You find out what and how Luffy feels about his crew. And you get to see if, like people surpass their limits at this point. You get so much out of it. And it'll grab your fucking heart. Like there's, there's excuse me, there's some stuff in there that'll they'll they'll get you. The Impel Down was just like, holy shit, like this is the Mission Impossible mission, and instead of doing shit, you know, with with the homies, Luffy's like, I gotta go this one alone. And then he makes some friends with people that you don't think. He's pushed. He's challenged. He's defeated. He is on the brink of death. And then this motherfucker has the longest fighting run from the time that he's in Impel down to we move to the next arc. It's like there's so much there. There's emotion. There's fight. There's like unbelievable feats. It's so fucking amazing. Um, and I was like, those those arcs right there that carries so much. Now the thriller bark was just interesting because you get to see, uh, you get what would you call it? Just selfless, selfless, selfless acts from Luffy's crew. And primarily from Zorlo. And you you sit there and you see who he is, what he's about, and his actual demeanor and respect for Luffy to move past some things in the past. And it's not necessarily anything bad, but we always know where, we know where Zorlo is. It's from the beginning of the series, through Alabasta, all the way up until this point. Uh, in Thriller Bark, and that was a defining moment because Zoro's that motherfucker that won't say a motherfucking thing to anybody about anything that happens. And it's not like he had to keep this shit a secret, but he's like, nah, nah, I'm good. And you're like, bro, he, he just, he just, you know what he did. You know what he did. He just did this. Okay. I'm, I'm, I keep I keep half rambling because I don't want to ruin shit. But arcs like that, it's like, how do I give somebody an arc that def defines even the Bellamy shit? When, uh, when I said Goku, when Luffy first met Bellamy and ran into um, Teach, like that shit. And then Bellamy the second time? Bellamy's second time shit was like, bro, that that that'll break your heart because they made it to some kind of point to where it was like, nah, we ain't about to do this shit again. And the first time was just like, oh, you you said some shit that you should never have said. What the fuck is that? Oh, a little boat. Nice. It's like you you was real out of line, out of pocket and disrespectful. 
So whatever happens, I understand. And that right there, seeing that scene, you're like, holy shit, Luffy and, and Zoro, like there's, I don't think there's nothing those motherfuckers can't do. And it, and it led into a new arc right before the Skypea arc. So it's like, how do I give you something that really represents One Piece out of, uh, you know, 900 episodes? But for me to do the best, I feel like mine to recommend would be the Summit War arc. And I would start, you know, right at the beginning, impel down and go go through there, which I think it is because you get to see why Luffy's going. You get to see what happens afterwards. You get to figure out all this backstory. You get even more mission about Luffy and Ace and his family and shit like that. And then it sets up the next big arc before the time skip. Um, and it's super emotional. So what is your most, what would you recommend to somebody to get into One Piece that really describes the series to you, to them? Like, it is all about heart. It's all about adventure. Don't give up your dreams. And then it's, it's N Nakama. They care about each other. You know what happened to them? Whoop, whoop. I was going to let you know. They got fucked. Damn, time. But it was an A. Uh, I didn't get anything new. I need more money. All right, next Devil Fruit user. This might be the last one. I said I'd do a short stream. I might do one or two more. All we're doing is gathering money and leveling up, motherfuckers. And then y'all are letting me talk, so thank you so much. put that in that don't make sense to put it in uh oh who's that oh that's true what's up big boy Ooh. um uh kizaru that motherfucker was with the yakuza back in the day he said ah um akainu like that rose on your chest Go ahead and pick him. Let's go back to Lucy. Use some of this to level him up. Okay, Inu said, look at this titty. Got a pink rose on it, bitch. Okay, uh, let's do... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm, I ain't got that much money, neither. Shit. Why did I do those? Oh, well, this motherfucker's gonna be strong. I should've been back here. What the fuck? I wound up paying attention, but I don't have that much money neither. Shit. Oh, okay, you got some strong moves. Kinda. Oh, what's that? Increase attack. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Mm, mm -hmm. Motherfucker's right in front of me. I really don't know how people, I don't know. Like, I guess it's just like real life. Cause it's like, yeah, you can be in the Navy in real life. But if I saw a motherfucker with lava fist punching the fuck out of other people, I'm retiring that day. I'm not even getting used to the heat. Like, nah, 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 nah. This, this, this nigga's melty. Nah, I, I ain't fighting him. Me? 
Bro, you gave me a gun. That shit melted when I got in 10 feet of this motherfucker. No. Nope. Not doing it. But Akainu. Akainu. Ooh, he's nasty. He's a motherfucker. Like, his power is so fucking good. He'll talk shit about your mama while she's right there. And he don't give a fuck. Now, yeah, I'm the government. Yeah, we supposed to be nice and shit, but fuck you and your mama. Fuck you, bitch. And be like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> he talking shit. And he's always angry. I love it. He's like a little Vegeta. Can we talk about Vegeta's height real quick? I love classic Vegeta. Shorter than Bulma. You know, with the brown hair. But the, if you look at Super, Vegeta's taller than Bulma right now. What's What the fuck is going on? I, like, just subtly noticed that and didn't mention I was like, man, I need to... Just go ahead and mention it's been too long. Nobody else has mentioned it. So what's up with Vegeta getting so damn big? Like, I don't mind it. Everybody grows. He's gotten older, but I don't, I don't know. Was he in his 20s when he first met Goku? Because he's 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 a little bit older than Goku, but we say he was in his late 20s. Goku was in his early 20s. Goku would have been what? Probably around 23, 24, some some around there. I'm, I'm, I'm free. But I'm just guessing. I got to really dive into it and look, but I don't think he grows that much from his, his twenties to like his forties. And then the age where he doesn't age anymore for 40 years until he makes it to 80. I don't think Vegeta's growing that tall, but what the fuck do I know? Maybe that's a new saying like deal. Vegeta's like Meg the stallion knees and then fucking stretch Armstrong knees. Those are part of saying traits like, hey, come on, Kakro, your hair doesn't grow. You don't age. You get strong fucking knees. Your ultimate fighting warrior. Twerk for days. And you stretch arm strong, bitch. And apparently they can watch a move one time and then uh, pick that up. And they don't need to breathe in outer space. I heard was an actual um, saying fact coming from Toy Animation. So that's interesting. Which proves why Vegeta could stand outside of that planet and blow the fuck out of it. But then again... Goku was, I mean, I guess he wouldn't know though, going on his way to Namek. Okay, we've already, we've already, I've, I've done these motherfuckers up. Let's, oh, uh, let's go up here. Ooh, what's your name? Oh, you look so cute. Oh, this motherfucker's gonna sumo with me. Okay. That's why you ass is asleep now, ain't you? Uh oh. Sumo and training coming over here. Oh shit, I thought I had that. What's the name? This will work. This will get all of them. Oh shit, this motherfucker's still alive. Fucking Oprah Winfrey is holding on. Is is Oprah doing like a, a Twitter now? I thought I saw I thought I saw her on Twitter. I was like, you're, you're rich. You're rich. You don't need a Twitter. You don't need Twitter, Oprah. Like you go out and and t like I feel like you talk in your community while doing bake sales, and then bitches are like, all right, I'm passing this on to a friend. They they are your people. Are Oprah's Twitter? She doesn't need an account. She has you people. She owns you. It's raining men out here. Come on, come on. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Let me be your friend. You know a motherfucker's cold when they don't put their their arms in the sleeves. This bitch had a custom suit made. He's like, "All right, sir, uh, can you go ahead and put your hand in the your arms in the sleeves?" Like, "Nah, I, I'm going sleeveless." I, well, I want sleeves, but I don't want sleeves. You know what I'm saying? Like, hell no. Nah. I want the shit. I want the cape. Well, sir, we got capes in the back. I want the jacket cape, though. Sir, what do you mean? Every bad motherfucker has a jacket cape, bitch. How do you not know this? You're a tailor. I'm like, yes, sir. Like, I feel like that's the way that conversation went. Hell yeah. I have a jacket cape, baby. You didn't know, baby? 
Oh shit, he coming up kind of quick, Hancock. <laughs> Hancock, you was on that bullshit and I let you slide when you, you know, oh shit, oh you wanna, bitch, I ain't got no love for no pirates. Oh, she. Oh, she over. She knows that my Akainu is 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 young. Mm. Has anybody gone back to watch Samurai Troopers, aka Ronin Warriors? Shit holds up. It make a good movie. I would like uh, fuck Zack Snyder could do that. It's almost like Army of the Dead. Have the military going in. Shit, uh, the uh, fucking samurai and shit keeping them out. They can't get in Japan. All the uh, adults have been taken to fucking Aku's house. That bitch was the first Aku. Don't 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 get it twisted. He was the first Aku, but he's keeping them, using them as fucking labor and shit. Goodbye. Mm. You know your kind to beat me. I'm I'm not gonna lie, Akainu's shit is so cold that like when he's in this state, you can't touch him. And it doesn't happen with a lot of characters. Again, we know we have our Paramecia, our Lugia and shit, and I, I feel like he 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 is up there. Like we knew that Aces uh, Devil Fruit was among some of the strongest. We know that Magma is stronger than Fire, so of course is stronger than that. Then we have Darkness. We have uh, you know, all these different fucking Devil Fruits, different classes, different types, and yet the abilities are just so fucking. To have this kind, of, this world be this immersive, and you have Devil Fruits, you have all these characters, you have these locations. That's a lot of fucking work, right? In my manga, like. I'm, I'm using things like this as templates if I'm going to expand that world for a l seemingly longer story because you never know how long it's going to go. But I feel like they have the potential to go for a while. Not as long as these, but... Oh, bitch! You motherfucker. I'm looking at everything now. All these... Where the fuck are y'all at? Y'all motherfuckers coming up and hitting me behind my back and shit. Yeah, look at me now. I'm your daddy. So I'm looking down at all my children. Like, where are y'all going? You know, I told you to take your ass to bed. Mm, come on, come on, come. We gotta kill these motherfuckers because that health is looking a little low. This motherfucker over here feeling icy and shit, bitch. Mm. Y'all motherfuckers give me a run for my money. There we go. Damn, that was fucking strong. Kara's still alive? Shit. She just went around the corner to make me think she was dead. Fuck. So y'all motherfuckers shouldn't even be on the same fucking team. Okay, I got I got enough specials to clear us up. Frankie? Damn, Frankie. Keep your robot ass at home. There we go. I did not know Frank. Okay, bitch. You know, y'all motherfuckers ain't gonna keep tripping my ass every time I fucking start to move, bitch. Yes, they're almost dead. Garrett, you fuck. Yes. Okay. I was like, Frank, Frankie is still alive, but I thought I killed him. But I was like, nah, we about to turn the tables now. Like, I, you know, look at that jacket, a pink rose. Oh, shit. 
Yes, yes. The motherfucker don't never smile. And I should be able to change his shit because now he's got that goatee. Uh oh, Kuma went up. Nice. And still trash. One more. What time is it? 908. Perfect. Damn. Perfect. Next devil fruit use. Oh, law. Law's a nasty one, but law should be. Hmm. Hmm. What was Hawkins? I remember I left up. I, I leveled up at Beji and his shit was fucking pissing me off. You know what, this one we might die, but I feel like we're gonna go with one of these three. Okay, Cavendish is high, so Bartolomeo, Bartolomeo or Teach. We going with Teach, he's old, he's, Teach is the old dirty bastard of One Piece. His game, he be spit, he spit game to Luffy, he spit game to Nami, when they first met before Skypea. He spit game to Whitebeard when they first met. He spit game to the world government. He spit game to the other emperors. He's spitting game to every motherfucker. That's old dirty bastard right there. Marshall D. Teach out here spitting game through the gaps with his motherfucking teeth. The oldest, the dirtiest bastard eating fucking cherry pie, blackberry pies and shit. Shit. We don't have nothing. Um, damn. We didn't get no money. Do, do, do. I like chilling. Like after this, I'm going to write for a little bit, but music like this, this and shit I love just sitting here chilling I was listening to Gundam Wing soundtrack Trigun soundtrack Cowboy Bebop and something else probably around from two to four as I was riding and creating thumbnails and shit for the the stream and, and from my series and shit uh, so there's nothing more relaxing like a, a, I probably shouldn't have got this coffee but I'm trying to stay up to a certain time so but music Maybe coffee, depending on the time, and then just being able to write. Shit is nice as fuck. Or workout. I know I like working out with the dogs as long as it's quiet, because they 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 get too rowdy. They see daddy doing something, and then they they need to move, and it, it gets too too crunk, and then people start fighting, and I can't get my work in. But days like this are nice, and music like this gets you in the right headspace. Like today, I think. Uh, I already stretch. I'm gonna stretch again. Probably do a little bit of yoga and then go back, back there. Hit the pull ups, set ups, push ups, and then just trying to rehab my knees. So a, a few squats. Um, probably have full metal panic on in the background. There we go, white beard. Oh shit! I didn't know them motherfuckers were around there. See, I don't like white beard's movement. He's so fucking slow. But I. I don't like it when I'm playing with the character, but this motherfucker is, is Pete. It's Pete from Goof Troop and shit. He's Pete, he's Peter Griffin, but it makes sense. He's a fat motherfucker, but he knows how to use uh, hockey. He's got two devil fruit powers, so he can do what the fuck he wants. And it, it makes it comical because he takes damage on the regular from people like, man, this motherfucker just got his, his nut hairs burned, didn't he? He don't give a shit though. He's a D. He's got the power of D. Oh, shit. Man, I want to know. Nah, I ain't saying shit. Blackbeard already know. 
because Shank stopped fucking Kaido from coming to the to the deal. Blackbird don't want no smoke. Oh, look at this. All right, please don't run like that, Blackbeard. That's kind of rapey, bro. I didn't play with him for a minute. I understand the decision for the character. I don't like it. Oh, get him. Luffy, you little bitch. Blackbeard's a nasty motherfucker, bro. Luffy, quit that bullshit. I ain't got that much power. Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? I'm going to just keep whooping your ass because I need some health. I'm about to die. I told you this one I might die. Nah, fuck him. When you, oh, and y'all give me this little bitty fucking ball of fucking assholes. Oh, wait a second. What's that? Another little ball of health? Come on now. You some bitch. Yes. Mm. Oh, you motherfuckers want to party? Y'all want to party? Take over my territory up here, bitch. Who is it? Oh, Sanji's brother. Fuck you. Control that shit too? Hell yeah. Start to thunderclap my ass. You better eat my balls, boy. So you better eat my fuck. I feel like that's how black. You better eat my balls, boy. Blackbeard is a nasty motherfucker. He had the nerve to say that shit to Luffy. Like Luffy about to fuck you up, bro. Luffy about to put it all in. Where's he at? Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Yes, here we go. These fucking specials. Oh yeah, you you about to be dead. Hmm. Oh meat? Oh shit, I didn't know that motherfucker was running after me like that. Like, bro, you gotta calm down some. Oh 
Okay. You're almost dead and you're doing all this bullshit. Fuck this. Fuck it. Special. Hitting the fuck out of me. Are you joking me? That, that didn't do shit. This. Thank you. Finally. Damn. This motherfucker's so tough. Don't don't get it twisted. I don't mind tough, but uh, Blackbeard ain't. He, oh shit! Oh yeah, I forgot I got my cloak on. He just ain't ready yet, bro. Where I am with my my skill points and my level, we ain't ready yet. Shit right there was nasty. I'm not gonna lie. Might have to use Blackbeard more often. Excuse me. Sick. This motherfucker's so sick. Special. Bodies just hitting the floor. So many. I think we're back now. Let's finish this out. Okay, Teach is cold. He can knock you up in the air with and just drag your ass behind in the shadows and shit. That's like a fucking scary ass power because it not only does that, but it does some other shit too if you watch the show. Mmm, the faded battle.
Mm. Nasty. Didn't I kill you earlier, Renju? Why are you here? Stand up. Damn, man, you see as strong as uh, Aikaino. He's gone. Damn, almost. Shit. Just gotta whoop some ass because I ain't got no health. A little bit of health. I'm doing fine now. We'll kill them and be done. I think these are the last two, but there's a red dot over there too. Who is, oh, Mihawk. Okay. Oh, well, he bringing his ass over here for this ass whooping, so. We ain't got to worry about it. Come get some, Mihawk. He's the last motherfucker. Let's keep him going. I don't know if that even touched him or not. I think it did, but I'm not sure. Come on now, Drake, get your ass out my face. up mom and that is it the mission is over are you guys still seeing this on uh facebook that's crazy but and an a i'll take the a that was the last match with devil fruit user uh going through one piece we played for an hour 30 sorry if you're on facebook and got interrupted and then jumped back up uh i have no idea what happened but we're back here with the very last match blackbeard is a nice character i like him so i might keep playing with them every now and then but i'm about to hop off if i do stream anything else today it'll be one more bonus stream but like i said i got some writing and stuff to do unless i change my mind because of time issues um then you won't see me for a little bit but like i said there's not that many left on here we've already got all s's so where we are at is the legendary pair uh, which is going to be Buggy and Shanks, or Shanks and Mihawk. And then we have the New World missions, which are worth even more money and stronger uh, people, stronger characters. But like I said, we've got to level up the characters that we do have. So it just relaunched. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining in on the stream. Uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for uh, you know, stars, tips, whatever you did. The conversation, uh, first and foremost, is always fun. It's always cool 
to pick your minds, but I'm hyped up on coffee, so I'm just talking about One Piece and anything else that pops into my mind. But like I said, I will be back later. Thank you guys for choosing to dive into today's gameplay of One Piece. Earlier I did a Call of Duty. We'll see if Facebook does their bullshit and hit with a copyright strike on this video as well if they do. All that means is go to the YouTube channel or the Twitch channel. So YouTube is Edge Gaming, EJB Gaming. Uh, the Twitch channel is twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5000. It's a twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5000. Or just type in Elijah underscore 5000. Take you there. Click the link. It'll take you to YouTube or the latest video that's uploaded, uploaded there. And it'll be the full thing. You don't have to worry about the copyright shit. The songs are copyright free. Facebook's still in their bullshit. So it is what it is. But see, it's reposting the stream that we've already done an hour and a half of. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh... Remember, I stream Sundays at 4.30 Central Standard Time, and then Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Every other Wednesday is, uh, every Wednesday is different, so it's either a community hang and chill, or either a little bit of anime podcast, because that podcast is bi-weekly. Then throughout the week, I sprinkle in other bonus content or short gameplays today. It's a short hour and a half gameplay of One Piece. Uh, earlier, I think I did probably an hour just Call of Duty. Might do four hours of Kingdom Hearts. Who knows? But hit the notifications. Type in notify on Facebook so you get notifications for when I do stream. If you're not a current watcher or you're not following the channel, the page, uh, Twitch, follow. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and, and all the other good shit. But I'm Elijah 5000. Thank you guys for staying tuned in to today's bonus stream second bonus stream but other than that i am out and i'll catch your ass in the next broadcast